welcome. This time we have a new tool to evaluate. Something every machine shop shouldn't be without. <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's really not related at all, but I uh, thought we'd take a look. The tool in question is not really related to machining at all. Uh, it's a Vivor demolition jackhammer 2200 watt and 1400 beats per minute. Heavy duty electric jackhammer six pieces chisels with bits and gloves, 360 degree swivel front handle for trenching and breaking holes. That is their blurb. Uh, I took advantage of their offer because any mechanical device interests me. And so this channel is not restricted only to machining, but also the creation, manufacture, uh, maintaining of any mechanical device because they all interest me. So I thought, what the heck, let's take a look. You might remember I picked up this cutter, uh, this automated cutter from Harbor Freight. It was a cheap and expensive thing. It didn't work very well on fabrics unless you held them taut. Same with rubber, but it does work pretty well, I find, on cardboard. If you can get if you can prevent this from running into uh, other pieces of cardboard inside. Oh, went through two layers right there. So they double box this guy, which is kind of nice because the outer box was a little bit damaged. Some of the crushing went through the inner box, but for the most part, it arrived unscathed, which is pretty good considering how heavy this is. I think this thing is 35 kilos or about 70 pounds, a little bit more. And if you're wondering how it does on just plain straight cardboard, quite well. Great for breaking down boxes to dump into the trash or recycling as the case may be. By the way, if you're wondering, this is double thickness cardboard. The jackhammer comes double box and I'm guessing the accessories are in here and the jackhammer is down here. That way the very heavy metal uh, spade and shovel and all those attachments won't have a risk of damaging the jackhammer itself. Shovel attachment, one of them. Some sort of uh, chisel attachment. Another type of shovel attachment. So it looks like only some of the accessories are external and yet another chisel smaller. One thing I'm curious to look at is how hard these are because if they didn't use hardened steel, they're going to dull almost immediately. So we'll take a look at that on the hardness tester. Uh, just by the way they look and sound, I'm pretty sure they are. Now we're down to just the jackhammer. All right, moment of truth. So during shipping, a little bit of the foam did get bounced about, but uh, that's probably to be expected. Um, Everything looks in really good shape here. This is the 2200 watt model, uh, 110 volts, 50 hertz, 1400 uh, revolutions per minute. And here are the other two uh, chisel attachments. There's a one. So this is probably how it normally ships and these other accessories were an optional item that they decide to include and the breaker. Came with an oiling can, a wrench and some brushes for the motor as well as some Allen keys. That's uh, interesting. I like the motor brushes if you use this a lot, but I suspect that if you use it a lot, the motor brushes wearing out are the least of your worries, but that's just a guess on my part. Also came with some gloves. These are really strange addition. <laughs> and a mask. I guess this is a dust mask to protect your lungs while you're uh, breaking up cement or something like that. Here's the jackhammer out with all the accessories it came with. So for starters, the accessories all look like rough casting except for the part where they made up with the jackhammer itself. And those look machined. So rough casting that's machined on the end. Let's check hardness. So I started with one of the chisels and uh, popped it in here with my angle anvil on here at the center of gravity more or less so that uh, I wouldn't have a hard time balancing it.
Hardness is Rockwell 59. That is surprisingly hard. That's really impressive. Because uh, that's so hard as to almost be brittle. Trying one of the other accessories. Rockwell 49. So that's quite a quite a difference there. They might also vary towards the end, so let's uh, try it closer to the end, the business end here. So I can't easily do the business end because they won't balance and it pushes on the indicator because it's just measuring depth of penetration. And Rockwell 56. So they're all over the place, but they're all hard. That's very interesting. The manual that comes with this guy is uh, pretty uh, sparse. <laughs> Most of it's on safety with a little bit of an explanation how to replace the chisels, uh, talking about the brushes, but uh, not much there. information there. Talk about how to uh, fill it with oil because it requires oil, which in this case is hydraulic oil. And that's about it. Not much to it. It comes shipped without oil, and it says it needs hydraulic oil number 46. The wrench that it comes with is to open this up. It would have been nice if there had been a bend in this. Yeah, completely empty, which makes sense because it could have leaked in transport. If you're looking for a hydraulic fluid, I found mine at the local auto parts store, uh, O'Reilly in my case. Uh, it was kind of pricey, but okay. Uh, there's a sight glass on the side that'll let you see the level of the fluid and it wicks through a cotton wick inside into the main chamber where the motor drives the offset weight. I wanted to pop this open for you guys but it proved to be more complicated than I thought. Uh, the, I thought the top cover would just come off with those six bolts and the two screws that are holding the rear handle on on the top but it turns out I was wrong. I, I go and open all this and only to find out that the top is a ta the offset weight. So there's a disc inside that's an offset weight that drives the piston that goes down the main column. And uh, that offset weight counteracts the pistons, you know, moving from side to side so that uh, you don't have a, a, too much vibration. However, uh, the unfortunate part is it's somehow attached to this top lid and it won't come off after undoing the six screws. So that was a false start. I never got that far, but I, my thinking is that it would require removing the motor from the bottom from the other side in order to get there. Uh, I did, as long as I took the handle, the rear handle off, I did notice that they put ins additional insulation protection uh, over where the wires enter the case. That's a really nice touch. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of vibration going on in this device, although in use, it really wasn't so bad. I did it barehanded without gloves, and it was fine. Um, I'm showing the bottom motor case there, uh, but the vibration could cause any sharp metal edges to cut through the wires. So they did a good job of making that safe. So that was another nice touch that you don't always see in some of the Asian made goods. After failing to get the top off, I decided to go in through the oil cup because they show in the manual that that whole cup comes out and it lets you see inside. I was hoping I could figure out uh, where the attachment point was but you couldn't easily see so there was a tiny bit of oil they obviously tested this thing in the factory and you can see the wick running down the middle of it and part of the instructions in the manual are to pull that wick further in or further out to allow more or less oil to drip into that main chamber which is a big hollow chamber so it's a little surprising uh, there's a nice gasket there on the lid but uh, there was also some additional celastic which i'm not quite sure silicon sealer I'm not quite sure why that was there so you got the piston back here pushing up here and i don't know exactly what's on this side i believe the piston pushes air and the air makes contact with a plate that pushes forward there's got to be a return spring in here somewhere and the whole point of that is that the mechanical motor drive doesn't make physical contact with the tool that there's an air gap to take some of the cushion because otherwise you'd probably destroy the motor and bearings in no time. And the cushion helps you out. Here's the 
Here's the 30 millimeter hex. I'm going to make a stand that this sits on so you can sit it like this. It's already flat on the bottom, but it's a little top heavy. So I'm going to make a piece of 30 millimeter hex bar, which I don't have. Uh, I'm going to make an aluminum piece that, or steel piece that fits inside here with a plate so that this thing can stand up. Then the tool itself is driven by this guy and there's a little bit of debris in here, which I already should clean up. So there's a Teflon ring here and a hardened steel uh, shaft uh, retainer, or I guess that's one way, one thing you'd call it, I'm not sure. This fits inside there. And then on the other side, you have a piston. So looking down the barrel of this guy, this is what the end of the tool pushes against. So this has got to move, which is really surprising because uh, this is just aluminum here. So that's really surprising to me. And there's got to be a spring, spring to, to bring this back as well, unless they use the vacuum behind it when the piston goes up. That might be what they do so they don't need the piston. And this might be the essentially a front piston. I can't exactly tell, to be honest with you. But I do see plenty of room for air to go around here. So when I run this with just my hand over it, I can feel the pressure. So it's basically just an air pump, pumping air in here, which pushes against this guy, which pushes the tool forward. I think that's it. That's very simplistic. Okay, so this thing's just hollow and this guy, this other guy fits in the end here. You can see the piston presses, it pushes air around this end piece and there's a gasket to the back. It's a rubber gasket around this and boy, there's not much to this. You can see that the tool itself has been hitting right here because it's left some marks in the metal. I'll admit, I'm a little confounded as the exact operation of this. There's a rubber seal here. There's a backup gasket here as if this whole thing slides back and forth. And maybe that's it as the piston moves back and forth. It pushes this back and forth. If that's the case, then this aluminum housing is going to have some issues at some point in time. Because uh, if that goes back and forth, you would think that would have to be steel. That's a little perplexing. If anyone knows exactly, I'd love to hear about it. I'll try and look it up as well, but it seems like this whole thing moves back and forth as the piston goes up and down. And since the piston's not pushing out directly, that creates a little bit of air gap uh, that cushions the blow so it doesn't damage it. And uh, this only rubs on two points here and the inside's relieved as well. And maybe that's just the trick. Kind of seems like this is the motion here. That's crazy. That doesn't seem like you're going to get a lot of longevity. I even see some wear back here. Because aluminum's really soft, so I don't know how that's supposed to work. But I think that's actually how it is working. I'm surprised. Well, let's get, get this guy back together and test it out. So now that I've taken apart and lubed it, now it's sliding freely. It was sticking up a little bit, so I think all I needed was some lube. And it is really odd to have, well, they have a rubber bushing around this, but to be running on aluminum. I guess they did that for weight's sake. That's really odd. So you can see on the sight glass it's full, or is that just a film of oil on there? That's the interesting question because the hydraulic fluid is very light color, so it's a little bit hard to tell. And my question is exactly how that wick is supposed to oil much of anything. Maybe it lets oil drip down the column towards the piston side, and it's not meant for the motor side. I'm not actually sure because that's a big hollow cavity up there. So I'm not sure how the oil ends up on any of the moving parts. None of them had oil on it when I took it apart. I've got this nice chunk of 6-inch concrete here that came from my brother-in-law. He was throwing out a bunch. And uh, 
I was going to give a shot uh, seeing how well this thing works. I know you want to hear it, but unfortunately, I lost all audio. As you can tell, I've overdubbed the whole end of this video because I lost a lot of audio. The The tool works pretty well and, and goes through the concrete uh, with relative ease. Um, it, considering it's six inch concrete and this thing only weighs like 30, 40 pounds. I know it's hard to see here. I didn't realize that I was uh, blocking the camera when I shot this either. So I'm going to give you a close up shot. Um, but it works surprisingly well considering how light the jackhammer is. This is not meant to replace an industrial jackhammer. Just keep that in mind when you're buying it. It's a small, easy to use, light, agile demo hammer. Uh, but you can see I'm making quick work. I'm going through the concrete pretty quickly here. And that is six inch concrete. I know you can't tell there. And it's on, um, that's bark underneath it. So it's not even backed by something solid. I bet you if I backed it up with like another piece of concrete or something heavy, uh, the tip would cut through, you know, break through a lot quicker because a lot of the vibration is absorbed by all the soft material underneath it. It's like three or four inches of uh, wood chips. Uh, that's just right next to my trash can. I thought it'd be convenient uh, to uh, <laughs> be able to toss the pieces out when I was done. Uh, also, I'm wearing hearing and uh, eye protection for this. It, I really, the, the hearing protection, I still would wear it, but it really wasn't totally necessary in this case because it wasn't that loud. Maybe with a larger piece you would, and you should always wear adequate protection, but uh, the unit is surprisingly uh, quiet. Um, so I, I continue and I break up this entire piece, all of which takes maybe four minutes. So that's really pretty good progress. Uh, another one of the nice attachments to it, are the and the, the one I'll probably use more than anything, is the shovel attachments because I have clay soil here. Um, so it's either the shovel and or the chisels that I'll be using because they have a chisel called a clay chisel there, and they're designed specifically to um, – dig in soil like mine where it's very difficult to dig if it's not moist and unless it's rained for like a week it's not moist so anyways I, I continue cutting this up and like I said in five minutes I've got this pretty large piece of concrete and a bunch of little pieces I realized that I failed to give you a close-up of the action and let you hear what it actually sounds like since my mic went out for like the whole end of my shoot the last time so I saved one of the small pieces it's actually like I don't know, the bottom's like eight inches by six inches kind of thing. It's six inches thick. So we'll go right for the middle of it here. Yeah, it's such a small piece. It doesn't put up a whole lot of resistance there. Here's another really useful feature in soil like mine. See how easily that digs in the clay soil. Now this has got some decomposing granite on top, but uh, I can guarantee you it's really hard underneath there because I've tried to dig in it recently. So this is a very handy feature and I'll be using that as well. If you're looking for a quick stand, all I did was take some flat aluminum plate, some 30 millimeter hex stock. I actually had to make this myself because I didn't have anything close, so I just took some stainless scrap I had and turned it down to 30 millimeters, and uh, you're good to go. Pretty darn stable, great way to store it. All right, after I took this guy apart, it's working better, but not perfectly. Every once in a while, it'll catch up and the, uh, the hammering action will stop, and I think, that's probably the sliding part inside, just shifting to an angle ever so slightly. I mean, the fit is good, but it's aluminum, which galls pretty easily. So, um, seems like not the best material. Maybe I'm missing something here. Um, but this, this is only for light home use. If you do any significant use, I think you're going to have a significantly reduced lifespan. Uh, the unit's nice and nice weight-wise. Uh, the tools are hardened. They'll last a while. There wasn't any wear from the chisel bit going into six inch concrete. So that's nice. Uh, it takes a while to get through six inch concrete and sometimes you have to try multiple spots because the amount of force this can apply is a lot less than a much larger demo hammer. Um, you know, the really big ones weigh like a hundred pounds and uh, take a external something like 
three or four, two or three hundred cubic feet a minute, or maybe more air compressor for the industrial ones. So this isn't trying to compete with that. This is sort of like a home demo unit. You got to do something small around the house. Uh, for me, digging in my clay soil, it makes it a breeze. Uh, digging small concrete uh, footings out, it's a breeze. Uh, it takes a little bit, you know, it's not instantaneous like a big one would be. But then again, this one doesn't break my back to move. So that's a huge plus. Uh, the handle grip is a little small for my liking here, but it fits my hand and I've got pretty big hands, which means almost everybody else, you know, the majority of people are going to fit just fine. Uh, overall, the price is pretty decent. Uh, but longevity, I'm not sure about. I'm not convinced I totally understand how this works, but from what I do understand, it's going to wear the aluminum pretty quickly. I took it apart and added some more grease, and I used molybdenum grease. Hopefully that'll uh, give it a better fighting chance at longer life expectancy. Um, think carefully and uh, do your research. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.